Hello, dear children. Namaste and welcome to session three of our class in CBSC Biology chapter Heredity and Evolution. This is Ambika, your biology master teacher, right here on this amazing platform of Vedantu. Okay, guys, so I really, really hope all of you have been staying safe and staying healthy because, as I always say, that's what matters most. Um, things will change, things will get better for sure. Let's just do our part until then and stay safe. Okay, so let's move on. As we know, we are done with most of the major concepts of the chapter heredity. We are in fact left with just one very, very small concept, which is sex determination. And that's what we are going to be discussing today. Theories of evolution, um, as you know, have been re uh, removed from the uh, latest syllabus. So um, we would probably have to, uh, you know, avoid that from our sessions currently, at least. Okay. So let's move on and uh, let me tell you something inspirational and motivational right now. It will be easy? No. Worth it? Absolutely. And what is this talking about? Just by one glance, just at one glance, it's very clear that it's talking about the road to success, the road, the pathway to success. Certainly, the pathway towards success may not be a bed of roses. There will be ups and downs and that is very, very natural. It's very, very normal. Although it may feel like it's completely thorny initially, you just need to hold on for a bit more because success is just waiting for you. Just have faith in yourself. Just keep working hard and that's it. Everything automatically follows. Okay, children. So here is my homework question, which I had given you in the last class. The factors mentioned by Mendel are now known as genes. Where are these genes found? So I've got uh, the full answers from uh, two children, Abhinandan and Vijay Parishan. Abhinandan is in fact uh, one student who regularly attends my YouTube sessions, whether it's live or uh, I think for my premiere sessions also. Um, most of the time I receive uh, answers from Abhinandan. And today I have received complete answers from both of these children. So both of their answers are pretty much uh, similar to each other. And that's also complete. Um, in a sense, I'll read uh, Vijay Tarishan's answer. Uh, genes are contained in chromosomes which are in the cell's nucleus. Abhinandan has just added that uh, they are contained in DNA, uh, which is like found in chromosomes and that is in the cell's nucleus. Rest of it is pretty much the same. A chromosome would contain hundreds to thousands of genes. Every normal human cell contains 23 pairs of chromosomes, making it a total of 46 chromosomes. Okay, and thank you very much children for giving me uh, the answer in so much detail. Um, so yes, absolutely right. And just in case um, you're wondering what alleles are, now we know what genes are and where genes are found. So what about alleles? So let me make that also clear to you at this point um, so yes we know that a human cell consists of 23 pairs of chromosomes as both of them have said so this 23 pairs would mean first pair is this okay this is first pair of chromosomes uh, this is the second pair and then there would be the third pair and so on we have 23 pairs in every diploid cell that we have now these two the members of one pair we call this single pair a homologous pair of chromosomes. These are homologous chromosomes, which means this member, suppose this is my first pair of chromosomes, one member has been contributed by one of my parents and the other member has been contributed by my other parent. This must be, say for instance, uh, this has been contributed by um, a chromosome 1, which is a copy of the chromosome 1 of my father. This is perhaps chromosome 1's copy of my mother and so on. Okay, this happens with every sexually reproducing organism, wherein your pair, members of your homologous pairs of chromosomes are contributed by copies of your paternal and maternal chromosomes respectively. Okay, so um, this is about it. So do remember, members of a homologous pairs of chromosomes always carry copies of genes, which means when I say gene for eye color, it means it would have two alleles. We've seen what alleles are and what genes are. And the alleles would be found on members of homologous chromosomes. Okay. So alleles are found on members of homologous chromosomes and whichever among them tends to be dominant is what gets expressed. Say for instance, from your father, you have inherited the allele for blue eye color. From your mother, you might have inherited the allele for brown eye color. Because brown eye color is dominant over blue eye color, generally in human beings, that tends to get expressed. 
Okay, so you will find alleles on members of homologous chromosomal pairs. And that's it. Genes are generally found on chromosomes. And with that, let us move on and let me tell you something that's very, very exciting and a happy moment and happy and a proud moment for all of us here at Vedanto because Vedanto students have bagged top ranks in IIT JEE, which has by far been the best results amongst all online classes. So congratulations to all our amazing super scorers who are right here in front of you. They absolutely are an inspiration to all of you not just these we have a few more here um, and a lot more also just a handful of them have been put up here on the slides so congratulations to all these super scorers from jee advanced 2020 well i would like to give them from a personal um, viewpoint i would like to give these children special appreciation because Things have been very different. Things have been very difficult for most people around the world in the year 2020 because of obvious reasons. The COVID pandemic has, um, you know, changed everything in our daily lives. Despite that, despite that, these children have not stopped working hard. Along with their parents' support, along with their teachers' support and guidance, they have worked very hard and done their best. And JEE Advanced is supposed to be one of the hardest um, exams ever in India, right? So hearty congratulations to all our dear children and the rest of you who are uh, watching me right now, certainly, certainly be inspired by them children because just give it a thought. If they can do it, you can also do it. It's not like they were, uh, they were probably born with extra brains or something like that. They also had exactly the tw same 24 hours in a day, just as you also have. So take inspiration from them. If they can do it, you can also do it. Just the, just the thing you need to keep in mind is faith in yourself, working smart and making the best use of the time that's available to you. Okay, so today let's learn about sex determination, which as I said, is the only topic that's left uh, from this chapter. So what exactly is it that determines whether a child is going to be male or female? In fact, Let's understand, considering the uh, millions of species that we have around the world, each species has its own mechanism of sex determination. In some of them, genetic factors play a role in deciding the sex of an individual, whether it's male or female, like in the case of human beings, like in the case of certain birds also. Whereas in certain organisms, in many organisms, in fact, like reptiles and so on, uh, there are non-genetic factors which play a role. How exactly do non-genetic factors play a role? The most common non-genetic factors which determine the sex of progeny are said to be the environment and in some organisms, interestingly, like in the case of certain invertebrates like snails, change of gender can be seen. Well, what exactly does this mean? I will just tell you very, very quickly. Children, do remember this is not part of your uh, syllabus. Like this entire thing is not part of your syllabus. Our main focus will be on how genetic uh, sex determination happens in human beings. But before we come to that, it's definitely worth understanding how it occurs in a few other animals. Of course, um, we can probably have many sessions uh, exclusively for talking about sex determination alone about different species. Let me tell you, two of them which would be very interesting for you first is about um, the environment okay so environmental factors which play a role in many of them in many reptiles for instance um, what happens is incubation temperature you know there are egg laying animals right uh, reptiles are typically egg laying organisms so the appropriate temperature that is needed to incubate these eggs is what decides whether the eggs are going to hatch out into males or females. In many species, in many reptile species, higher temperature incubation would result in females. A relatively lower temperature incubation results in males. So what does this higher and lower? How much exactly is that? Is it 30 degrees? Is it 22 degrees Celsius? Is it 33 degrees Celsius or even lower or higher than that? That is in fact completely dependent on what species we are talking about. So as you can see here, um, uh, the, what you see here in front of you, the graph in front of you shows um, three species of reptiles, a couple of uh, turtle varieties and um, an alligator variety, which you can see, American alligators, in fact, um, wherein temperature decides whether 
the eggs are going to develop into males or females. So for example, if you look at um, certain kinds of turtles, temperatures at a lower, basically relatively lower temperatures in the sense below 23, 22 degrees Celsius, it's most likely going to develop into females. Okay, between 23 to 28 degrees, as you can see this peak in the graph here, sees that there is a shoot in the percentage of males. What you see on the y axis is the percentage of males. Okay, x axis shows you the temperature in degrees Celsius. So, so as you can see here in this peak, what it shows is that there are more number of males as compared to females at temperatures between 22 to 28 degrees Celsius. Okay, this is for uh, a kind of reptile which belongs to the genus Macroclemis. Macroclemis teminki is this particular species. Uh, there are also others wherein the temperature would be different. Say, for instance, in this particular genus, uh, Trachemis scripta, this particular species of uh, turtle, you can see that the temperature is slightly higher at which it would be dominated by females or dominated by males. And in the case of the American alligator, uh, alligator Mississippians, as you can see, um, between around uh, the temperature 33 degrees Celsius, 32 to 33 degrees Celsius, it is said to be dominated by males. Below that or higher than that is said to be dominated by a female proportion in the sex ratio. Okay, so this is what it is. So it's been observed that in the American alligator's eggs, an incubation at 33 degrees Celsius produces mostly males as we saw in the graph, while incubation at 30 degrees Celsius produces mostly females. It can be, uh, females can be produced even at a temperature higher than 33 degrees Celsius. Or sometimes in some species, above 33 degrees Celsius, it can mean a mix of both male and female species also, male and female individuals also, completely species dependent. But just have this idea in your mind that in most reptiles, in many reptiles, sex determination is dependent on individuals. What about uh, the other case which I told you about sex uh, change, gender change? So this is most commonly seen in uh, some invertebrates like snails, wherein um, what happens is when two snails come in contact with each other, say, say for instance, um, both are male snails, uh, among both of them, whichever is bigger in size, when it comes in close physical contact with another male snail, the bigger one, the physically bigger one, tends to change its gender and become female, okay? And then copulation would occur. This is what happens in many snails and many other invertebrates also. Uh, it, it is observed in certain specific kinds of snails. They are commonly even known as mystery snails, okay? So very, very interestingly, we can talk about a lot of them. But anyway, coming back to what will be very, very relevant for you, which is mostly with regard to online education. Most children face these problems these days, um, unanswered doubts, uh, improper notes, because I think, I personally think, compared to our times, compared to my generation, children these days are so used to getting everything ready-made. You want ready-made notes for everything. You want, you want ready-made um, answer uh, scripts for everything, like for reference, revision material, everything. It's very rare that children these days are motivated enough to make their own notes, make their own revision material and so on. Uh, tests and assignments, of course, uh, in the year 2020, the type of tests, the type of assignments have completely changed because everything is online. Competitive exam preparation becomes a challenge, especially when it comes to NTSC, Science Olympiads, um, NEET, JEE, everything. Competitive exam preparation has become a huge challenge for many children these days. Choice of schedule, choice of language, all of this is a problem because all of this might clash with what happens in your school. But not to worry because as long as Vedantu is here, all of these problems are solved completely for your children in addition to giving you a lot of bonuses. And among those bonuses, the best ones are giving you access to unlimited live classes, plenty of micro courses and crash courses, performance reports, personalized attention and whatnot. So all you have to do is 
visit the link which was given in the description box below and the pinned comment given below and use the coupon code AMBPRO to avail the best benefits, the best discounts that we have out there. Okay, so I don't want to keep any mystery. So I will also give you the basic details of the pricing. So once you click on the link that I have uh, told you is in the description box below, uh, you will be guided to a window where you have to choose your grade. So most likely it's going to be grade 10 for children watching me right now. And then you have to select your target. So it's going to be CBSE 2021 or anything as relevant to you. Check out the details. All the features of Vedantu Pro have been mentioned here. The, the main, the top features, okay? And then you click on the button that says get subscription. Then what do you do? You will have an option to pick from three major plans that we have a one month of subscription three months of subscription or a six month subscription one month subscription basically means for 30 days roughly for one full month you will get unlimited live interactive classes test series and analysis assignments and notes all for your major subjects which means physics chemistry biology maths and all your social studies subjects and this covers all your most important subjects right so um, everything together for one month you can avail it at 2699 without any discounts that is okay then now comes uh, the part of the discounts which is application of the coupon code AMBPRO which reduces your amount payable from 2699 to 2159.2 Okay, this is for a one month of subscription for the entire package, all your subjects together at this amount. And then for three months, normally it's charged at uh, 6999 whereas application of the same coupon code AMBPRO would reduce your amount payable to 5599.2. Okay, this is for three months of subscription, which means roughly for 90 days, stay aram say just stay uh, without any tension and leave everything to Vedantu. All you have to do is be systematic children of Vedantu. That's it, okay? That too, available at such a reasonable rate of 5,599.2 for three months. What about for six months, which means for the rest of this academic year, the normal pricing is 11,499, but application of the coupon code AMBPRO reduces your amount payable to 9,199.2. Imagine, just think about it, work out whatever suits your budget, talk to your parents. But my only suggestion is children, do not miss out on this opportunity to learn from the best teachers of India, to learn from the most passionate and the most friendly teachers um, out there um, in the country. And at the same time, it's available to you at such pocket friendly rates. So just in case you're still wondering if this is actually pocket friendly, I'll tell you a small exercise to do uh, so that you can uh, work out for yourself whether it's pocket friendly or not. Uh, this total amount, which I have told you, divide this by the total number of sessions that you can avail through this course in this entire six months, totally how many sessions can you avail? Okay, but then also have in mind that it's not just the sessions, it's also like access to test series, assignments and notes and everything that you will have. But those are added benefits. But to get a rough estimate, calculate how many sessions would you have in these six months, divide this total amount payable by the number of sessions to get the per session cost. Okay, once you get the per session cost, I am very, very sure I'm damn sure you will find this to be one of the most reasonably priced courses out there in the country because as a parent I've been seeing every single day I know how expensive children's education is becoming so definitely make use of this children talk to your parents also give it a good thought and go ahead further I don't want to tell you more about it okay so as I was telling you non-genetic and genetic factors which decide the sex of the progeny environment temperature as in the case of reptiles change of gender as in the case of snails as i have told you now let us come to genetic factors which decide whether progeny is going to be progeny are going to be male or female so in birds and in humans it's the chromosomes or the genes that play a role in deciding whether uh, the offspring are going to be male or female. So as we know, what is it in the genes uh, and where do you find the genes and chromosomes? Of course, it is in the nucleus of a cell. We know that. And we started today's session also talking about that. Now comes sex determination in humans. What is it that decides whether a baby is going to be male or a female? 
we know in Indian culture, um, people generally when they come to visit a pregnant mother, um, I can recall my experiences also when I was expecting my baby. Um, people would be like, they would look at your appearance. Uh, is your skin shining bright? Or do you have acne? Do you have pimples? All of that people observe and they will be like, oh, you, you, you are shining bright. So definitely it's going to be a girl. Some people say the opposite. They are like, if you get a lot of pimples, it's it's it means that it's a girl or the opposite is going to be a boy. Well, I don't know. They have their own theories to uh, come up with, uh, you know, their guesses. But anyway, unfortunately or fortunately, everything is decided much before those pregnancy months. And when is that? It is decided at the time of fertilization when the male fuses with the female itself. Now this is a karyotype with sex chromosomes. Karyotype is the basic representation of all the chromosomes of an individual. Okay, so um, this is a human karyotype uh, wherein you can see chromosomes arranged in pairs, the first pair, second pair, third pair and so on. Uh, till pair number 22, everything is pretty much the same in males and females. We call pairs 1 to 22 autosomes, okay? Chromosomal pairs 1 to 22 are called autosomes in humans. 23rd pair is what we call sex chromosomes, which is different in males and females. In males, if you observe it, there is one X chromosome and one Y chromosome, which means we can't call them homologous chromosomal pair because they are different. Males have one X chromosome which they have got from their mother and they have got a Y chromosome which they have got from their father. But then in females, the 23rd pair, which is the sex chromosomal pair, is that is also a homologous pair just like uh, any other autosomes, which means both of them are similar to each other because both of them are X chromosomes. Females always inherit X chromosome from the mother and X chromosome from the father. I think that pretty much explains what decides whether the baby is going to be male or female. As we know, let's recall what we have learned in the chapter, how do organisms reproduce? At the time of fertilization, millions of sperms compete to fuse with the single egg. The queen which is the egg, sits there uh, and she gets to decide or she doesn't exactly decide, but then she just sits there and waits for one of the sperms to win the race to fertilize her. Yes, as you can see, many sperms come and try to fertilize the egg, but whichever sperm manages to fuse with the egg first is what decides. So how does this work? Millions of sperms are released in one ejaculation round by a male and approximately half of these sperms carry an X chromosome and the remaining half carry a Y chromosome. Then what? Only one among the millions of sperms typically manages to fertilize the egg to form the zygote as you can see. And if that one sperm, the winner sperm, if it happens to be a Y carrying sperm, the result is a baby boy. And if it's an X carrying sperm, the result is a baby girl. As simple as that. So at the time of fertilization itself, it's decided whether the zygote is going to develop into male or female. And further, the zygote undergoes all of these rounds of cell division. Look at it once again. The sperm is coming in, fertilizing the egg. And then the zygote is formed whether it's a male or a female is already decided now and then it undergoes its further divisions, cleavage and all of that becomes an embryo, becomes the fetus and it is actually decided already whether it's a male embryo or a female embryo, female fetus or a male fetus because fertilization has already decided it. So to summarize it, sex determination in human beings, in males, the types of gametes can either be an X carrying sperm or a Y carrying sperm, whereas Females produce only one type of gamete, one type of eggs and all of the female eggs would carry the X chromosome, which means female gametes are destined to make only baby girls because female gametes don't have a Y chromosome. Whereas at the time of fertilization, if the Y carrying sperm happens to fertilize the egg, it develops into XY, that's a male zygote. Whereas if the X carrying uh, sperm fertilizes the egg, it develops into XX, developing into a female zygote, as simple as that. Okay, so I think 
it's high time all Indians uh, became aware of this because even today in uneducated parts of India, uneducated parts of India, like in backward parts of India, there are people, there are families in which sadly they really want a baby boy and they keep pressurizing the female to have more and more children just so that the next one might be a boy, the next one might be a boy and so on. Why does it matter? How does it matter? Whether it's a boy or a girl, everything is a gift from God is what I personally believe. Okay, so uh, all we need to ensure is that we must have a balance in sex ratio. Males and females must be pretty much equal in number and only then species can continue. In fact, we are at a very high risk. The Indian population especially is at a very high risk right now because there are not enough females according to statistics. Um, respective corresponding to the number of males that we have in society what do we blame it on who do we blame it on well i would blame it on female feticide that's commonly practiced even today sadly although it's been reducing by a huge number because uh, prenatal sex determination has been banned in many parts of um, india in 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 the entire country actually um, sex determination uh, you know predicting whether not predicting but identifying whether the fetus is male or female uh, when when the female goes for a prenatal scan um, to see whether the baby is healthy there used to be a practice like around 25 30 years ago to check whether it's a male or a female and if it's a female many couples used to go in for a purpose and a deliberate abortion sadly why do that prenatal Fe uh, killing of a fetus is exactly equivalent to killing a human baby and let's let's overcome all this it's it's high time we came over all the children let's be responsible um, future citizens of the country and spread awareness about this females should be there and that too healthy females have to be there in our society okay so with that let's answer a few questions based on whatever we have discussed in today's session if the eggs of American alligator is incubated at 33 degrees Celsius, the progeny formed will be mostly male, female, will initially be male, uh, then later female or none of these. 33 degrees Celsius. I've shown it to you in that graph. And your time is up. The answer is male. 33 degrees is male. Below 30 degrees is said to be female. And above 33 is said to be either female or a mix of males and females. Okay, next one. Dash helps reptiles to determine the gender of progeny during the time of incubation. Thermosensitive nucleus, thermosensitive DNA, thermosensitive protein, thermosensitive nuclear membrane. Use your common sense. What could it be? What is thermosensitive, by the way? All the options are mentioning that term. Uh, it means sensitive to temperature. Okay. And your time is up. The answer is thermosensitive proteins help reptiles determine the gender of the progeny at the time of incubation. Now next, there is dash percent chance of progeny to be female in humans. What is it? Your time is up. The answer is 50. It's a matter of random chance. 50-50 probability which is decided during fertilization. 50% probability for it to become a male. 50% probability for it to become a female. It's only a matter of the race between the X chromosomes and the Y chromosomes. Okay. Um, in case of humans, gametes from dash parent determines the gender of the child. Yes. Is it the female parent? Is it the male parent or is it both A and B or is it none of these? And your time is up. The answer is yes. Gametes from the male parent helps to determine the gender of the child. As I was saying, in many parts of the country, in uneducated uh, sectors, uh, the females are often blamed for not being able to give birth to a, a male baby. So we know now that scientifically it is the male who decides whether it's going to be a male or a female baby so children any doubts that you have related to this please put it in the comment section below and we will be taking it up in our doubts plus mentee session okay so you now know about sex determination and that brings us to the end of all the concepts in the chapter heredity and evolution um, and let me give you the homework question for today which gender is homogametic in humans male or female and why Yes, so think about it, 
homogametic. What do you think that would mean? Okay, does it correspond to males or does it correspond to females? And why do you think so? Give me an explanation. It needn't be too elaborate. Just give me like a one or two sentence answer. That is more than enough. As long as it's short and crisp, I will be happy with it. Okay, children, and do remember to visit the link given in the description box below and the pinned comment, which is there in the comment section below and apply the coupon code AMBPRO to avail the best discounts that we have for Vedantu Pro subscription courses. And thank you very much, children. If you have liked this video and you, if you have found this useful, please do remember to hit the like button right now. Do share it with all your CBSE class 10 friends also because I'm sure they will also benefit from this. And subscribe to our channel Vedantu 9th and 10th English in case you haven't done it yet because we are working very, very hard and we are nearing, you know, we are making good progress in terms of uh, completing your portions on time and after this we would also come up with creative sessions more and more creative sessions to help you revise better and make you board exam ready so to ensure that you do not miss out on any of our updates please do stay subscribed click on the subscribe button right now and the bell icon right next to it to get notifications every time we put up something new and until then do remember to take care stay happy and stay healthy i will see you in the next session bye bye